Sairam everyone, uh, just to recollect what we were discussing, um, Swami quoted from the Upanishad that we are the children of immortality and that by remembering him constantly, we will remember him when the end comes and then one who remembers the Lord at, as the last thought, he will merge with the Lord. That was the assurance given by Krishna, and we discussed that last week. Um, so I asked Sister Kalyani to continue from where we left off. Saira. Shrinvantu Visve Amritasya Putra is the call. Listen, O ye children of immortality all over the world. That is the invitation. The heritage of immortality must be recognized and experienced. It must be won back. The bonds of name and form must be got rid of. They are but bonds made of dream stuff. They are changeful and temporary. They are not genuine natural characteristics of the jiva. Real wisdom consists in recognizing that man is pure bliss, bliss that persists from the past and into the present and the future. Escape from grief for a brief period of time and the attainment of joy for a short time, these are not signs of real liberation. If you seek this steady, genuine, pure state of bliss, you must be attached to me, said Krishna. Arjuna, whoever does spiritual practice after attaching himself to me with a view to liberate himself from old age and senility, will know all that is to be known of Brahman, Karma, and Atma. I am master of Adiputa, the highest among the physically manifest, Adhideva, the supreme among gods, and Adiyagna, the presiding deity of sacrifice. And if I am thus worshipped, the worshipper will develop equanimity and full control of the vagaries of the mind. Besides, such a person will dwell on me without forgetting me, even in his last moments. For that reason, he will reach me too. That is to say, he will merge in me. Thank you very much. So um, we had been, we read this and discussed last week. Um, if um, anyone has something to share, please do so. Else uh, we will move on. Sire. So I think it's okay, I guess, then we can move on, Sire. Arjuna, everyone is anxious to avoid old age and death. It is human nature so to be anxious. But of what avail is mere anxiety? One's conduct and behavior should be in accordance with one's objective. If one has sincere yearning, and if one places full trust and faithfully surrenders to the Lord, the fog of grief will be dispersed by the rays of his grace. If, on the other hand, one places his trust on the objects of this world, the consequent grief will never end, nor can they be ended by any other than the Lord? Serve the master of Maya, the designer of all this dreamland, rather than the dream itself. How can attachment to delusion yield anything but disappointment? How can joy be won by such pursuits? If joy is not won and grief avoided, how can liberation be achieved? Krishna asked. Then Arjuna intervened. Krishna, he said, cannot such men attain you? You say that grief must be conquered before one can attain you. 
Well, what is the origin of that grief? How is it to be tackled? How does it arise? How can one try to overcome it without knowing its origin and course of development? Please tell me how this grief arises in the human mind. Thank you very much. Swami is uh, stating that uh, the anxiety which human beings suffer about death and old age. And he's also saying that in general, those who have grief will not be able to attain. So that's what he has stated, what I can see. Um, I will just open it up for discussion. Anyone who would like to share something or anything about what we just read, please go ahead. Can we go line by line for Telugu? Okay, Auntie, you can read. Oh, Auntie, you are muted. Sorry. Uh, first line that uh, Arjuna, everyone is anxious. Um, I'm reading the Telugu translation. Musilitanamu maranam. I rendu dukkamal minchi tappincho konavalni prati manoniki undunu unda vatsunu. So everyone, and that egg line. Oh. Please go ahead, uh, Arun. So Swami is telling everyone has this anxiety about uh, old age and death and they may have you know Swami is giving both they have and they may have so you know there are two categories of people uh -huh. just having that does not of is of no use we need to have uh, some act some Acharana means practice or you know search, which is conducive, conducive. Conducive. Nijamuga atti tevra maina ave than a toe. Bagwantunipai, Sarba Bhaditulavesi, Acharin Chuani Dukamuno, Anukraha Kirana Mulato, Anta Marin to know. I think its uh, translation is pretty accurate. You know, if you have a sincere or deep yearning for that Swami uses the word Tivra, which is basically deep or uh, with much importance, I think. All the this thing you put it on. Yeah. Uh, we faithfully yeah. surrender to the Lord. Mm. Uh, Kani, Dukka Rupa Ashra in Chinavat, Ativari Dukamo, Yenatiki, Tirunadi Kadu Kadu. So, people who place their uh, attention on things of the world which are full of grief, full of capable of giving grief, how can they, uh, it can never be removed? So, sorry, Mareveru Tirchaler, Mareveru Tirchaler. No one else can also remove it. Maya Patini Ashra in Chaka. Maya Padhartha Mulanu Asra in Chuariki Dukum Yetu Tiruno. So, people who do not uh, seek the master of the Maya, instead, if they seek uh, things which are full of Maya, how mm -hmm. can it ever be removed? Mm -hmm. Anandam Evidamana Praptinsuno. How can a bliss be obtained? I rendu Jarukuna Muktiki Margamedi. If these two don't happen, how what is the path for mukti or liberation? Apudu, Arjunudu, Krishna, Ninu Pandalera. So Krishna is asking, Oh Lord, if such people won't they be able to obtain you or reach you? E Dukka Nivriti Madhata Karana Mansunao. Ninu Pandutaku, E Dukka Nivrite, Madhati Karana Mansunao. So you're saying this is the this is the primary uh, primary step mm -hmm. for us to uh, reach you. Asalu, this dukkamanu ko karan mei What is the reason for this? What is the cause for this uh, sorrow? Adi ekla karu kuchundi. Auntie, what 
అది తెలుసుకున్న కదా నివారణకు ప్రయత్నించుదురు only if you know that you can work for the removal of that kaana dukkamunaku kaaranam emo modatu telupu swami annadu so he is telling oh lord give tell me what the exact cause of this uh, in the first place if why don't you tell us what is the cause of this grief cause grief first తెలుసుకున్న కదా నివారణకు ప్రయత్నితురు No, the first one, Adi, Yetlu Kaluhu Chunnadi. How is, how is it happening? No, then. Where in, how, where, where are you finding other words? Adi, Kumre, Thiruva. I think. Satya, Tarasa. Sai Satish, I think he, and the Kalugu Chinnadi only, I think he may be telling. Okay, and Ka- yeah, Kalu- because I thought it is Kalugu Chinnadi, yeah, Kalugu yeah. Chinnadi, then it is happening, yeah. Kalugu Chinnadi, yes, yeah. Kalugu Chinnadi, yes, Kalugu Chinnadi, yes, Kalugu Chinnadi. Yes, Kalugu Chinnadi. Yes, Kalugu Chinnadi. Yes, Kalugu Chinnadi. That line about Maya Padani Ashrayan Chaka. Ah. And then Maya. the second one, ah. Maya Padarthalana, that means uh, if we seek things full of Maya, that's what that means? Ah, uh-huh. ah, ah. you are not uh, um, keeping in mind your master the maya but you are rather depending on the maya padarthamlo padartha means stuff things things of maya worldly stuff oh, okay brother yes can i ask you question please this is third line one conduct and behavior should be in accordance with one's objective so wants to set the objective he has to know what is the objective right so how can um, that uh, we can say the conduct Uh, and the behavior should be in line with objective because objective maybe is not right the objective so no, no, so have... sister i think there's a lot of echo when you're talking but i know oh, yeah. it's because of you or okay. someone but uh, i think the aunt the sri swami is telling you know just when we anxious we want something to go away the fear to go away or the you know uh, well, worry about old age and death to go away okay so the people want to achieve that objective of removing that sorrow when you know somebody sad they are also worried about how to remove it then swami says if you want to remove you have to do what is appropriate for removing that fear but uh, the translation i don't maybe it is not coming through clearly daniki anukula aacharanam mukhya undal that's all swami says one yeah. second హెల్ప్ just you are, just because you are afraid of that that's not going to go away okay okay so you have to engage in some action <laughs> or activities which will help you attain the goal of removing that fear of death or fear of uh, old age so the what is referred in the one's objective the objective is to remove the anxiety remove the, removing the anxiety okay okay good thank you see i think the word, as soon as you said objective i think that's where we are getting tripped because swami doesn't say so auntie uh, uh, he doesn't say that 
He doesn't say that. That's why. Yeah, because objective takes away everything. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. See, Swami saying you have an anxiety. Okay, and then if you want to remove that, you have to do what is helpful for achieving that goal. That's yeah. all Swami is saying. See, because people are anxious, so they want to remove it. And so if you're going to remove it, uh, do what's, what's needed. I think that's what Sean says. But I don't think that once you put an objective, then you're asking what is the objective. Yeah, because there's no objective, then you cannot, you know, you set an objective with the highest, the, like whatever you wanted to achieve. But that's So this is one reason we are trying to, Swami has helped us with Telugu, so we can <laughs> go and check. Uh, now it makes sense. Thank you, Saira. Sairam, Sister Shivani. Sairam, <clears throat> Sairam, just a just a clarity. <clears throat> you know the fourth line: if one has sincere yearning, and if one places full trust and faithful surrender to God, the fog of grief will disperse. Means, you know, once we have faith on that, that grief will disperse, and the second paragraph where Arjuna is saying, if somebody will, if you say the grief must be conquered first to attain you, I don't know if I'm reading, I'm reading in tandem in the sense, what I'm understanding if I put, if I place full faith on the Lord, even though I have a grief, it will disperse because my faith supersede. But here Arjuna is questioning, hey Lord, you are saying one has to conquer grief to attain you first. So I don't know, it's, it's just, or I should not relate to that. I'm just saying it's 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 not really uh, marrying, basically. So now, can you repeat the question, sister? Uh, yeah, fourth line is saying, my understanding is, if I have grief, if I have sorrow, if I if I build that trust, if I put my trust on the Lord. It will disperse. It will go away. I don't. But here Arjuna is saying, before I attain you, Lord, you are saying the grief has to be dispersed first or have to be conquered. <laughs> My thing is in initially here, Arjuna, that if somebody plays on me, the trust, the faith, uh, the fog of grief will disappear. But Arjuna is questioning here that grief must be conquered before I attain you. And I'm thinking attaining and trusting Lord will help me to conquer my grief. Actually, actually in Telugu, Swami is just saying this. First, he says, Arjuna, Arjuna asks Krishna, Krishna, those who have this anxiety of death and uh, old age, can't they, can't they reach you? Those anxieties, uh, those who have this anxiety, can't they reach you? So Krishna is saying, um, um, Arjuna is asking, what is first of all, Dukkha Nivrutti Madhata Karana You have to, you say that you have to conquer Dukkha. Asalo, ee Dukkha Manuko Karana Mimi, what is the reason, what is the origin of this uh, Dukkha? What is the origin of this grief? First of all, let me know. Arjuna is asking Krishna to tell him what is the origin of that grief. How, then we can handle it. Yeah. Without, uh, without knowing its origin, how, what steps can you take to remove that, overcome that? First of all, we should know what is the reason for our grief. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we, as far, Arjuna is asking Krishna. I hope I have made it. Yeah, I think Sister um, Auntie has cl uh, clarified what was in the paragraph, but I think you should also take into consideration the previous two paragraphs which we read. Where Swami is telling we are children of immortality, and to attain that our real state, we should uh, think of the Lord continuously. And when we are dying, mm. and then Swami goes on to say, uh, "That's Swami is quoting Arjuna, uh, sorry Krishna, which is Himself, that if we are anxious of old age and death, we will not be able to think of the Lord." Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, so that is the problem for most people. And then, uh, then he says how it can be, that grief itself can be removed. And uh, then Arjuna is asking the question, oh my, 
if we are worried about these things, won't we be able to attain you? Mm. Then every all or everyone has these worries. And then he says, okay, then tell us why that worry comes and how, so that we can remove it. Mm. I think that's the question. So it's, I think, so we have to take it into the yeah. context that how Swami has been building this up until now by Perfect. reading, referring to the previous two paragraphs. Thanks. Uh, Brother Thasa. Yes, yes, Sairam, but I'd like to add to the point to the same thing. Uh, our main objective is uh, uh, the bliss. But we are worried about the death and the old age. That we cannot avoid about the death and the old age too. So because we are trust on the uh, worldly object, we are, not, uh, we are not believing that what is the uh, main thing uh, what is not we are uh, uh, we are atma so uh, we are comparing our body consciousness and the body so this this is all that uh, this all because of the ignorant once we understand once we clear the ignorant we are not, not going to worry about the death and the old age thank you saira <laughs> Yeah, I think, brother, you have gone to the next paragraphs already. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Agnana. Yeah, so. Talking about Agnana and ignorance. Uh, can we also just read in Telugu that uh, sentence that Sister Shivani was mentioning? That Nija Muga Ati Tivra Maina, that one? Uh, yeah, one. Oh. That's what you mean, I know that in. After ah. earlier, earlier than that part, um, where says Nige Muga Ati Tivra Maina Ave then Okay, okay. So the Nijamuga. sincere yearning, that's that line. Nige Muga Ati Tivra Maina Ave then ato Bhagavantuni Pai Sarva Bhagde Taluvesi Acharin Chuvani Dukkamunu Anukraha Kiranamulato Anta Manarin to know. That's what you want, you know. Yes, can you go through the meaning of that again? Okay, Tivra Maina Avidana means uh, hmm. uh, yearning, you know, intense yearning. Intense, oh, thank you very much. Size of this, Tivra means intense, yeah, with intense yearning. I think that's thanks. Avidana is intense, Avidana is yearning, or yearning, yes, yeah. intense yearning. Mm -hmm. So you leave everything to the Lord. Anugraha means grace. Kirana means race. Grace of race of grace. Grace. <laughs> you will remove your sorrow. For any devotee who, with intense yearning, leaves everything on the Lord, you know, all badhyata means what? Auntie, all troubles or all uh, responsibility, so no, responsibility. but responsibilities. Here, uh, uh, here badhyata maybe we will surrender. It's better, better word. It's yes. uh, responsibility, it's trust, trust yes. and sacrifice. Brother, again, I wanted to add, go back to the same question. So what is the objective we fix it? Like uh, for the people like uh, thinking old age and death and all. So what objective you have to fix it to conduct yourself accordingly? Like uh, there are so many. So, so yeah. sister, everyone, whatever we do in life, we are all trying to remove some sense of something lacking. You know, some pain, some sorrow, some sadness. And we are trying to find solution for that. For example, if you are going and accumulating, people generally have a sense of security if there's money. We think if we have money, we can solve all problems. Uh, we, if we accumulate uh, property and things that we will have a place to stay. So everything is, or in the entire life is actually run based on uh, anxiety only. 
you know we just want security ultimately all the entire human life is all about security or if we have some if you are hungry we need food in if you are if you are ailing we want something so we want to always remove some problem or fear or anxiety that is the goal of every human being whether they realize it or not okay so the thing is because we are all so dependent on the world which is actually impermanent and doesn't last we are always going to be in a situation we are always looking for something else to solve the problems okay but among out of all these problem we are also afraid of death if we fall ill we run to the doctor thinking that we may die okay so you know we may think you know old age some problems have come uh, so you will go and see can we fix the old age this is what people are spending all their time on okay so that is because of the anxiety and we don't even realize that we are anxious and because of that we are not able to even think of god but so in the previous paragraph krishna has told you are all children of immortality <laughs> you don't die okay and if you think of me you will come and merge with me that is that is the first last two last slide which we looked at okay so once that is so usually we don't even know what is our objective when we do anything okay you can even look at it that way we all we don't know what exactly should be our objective also we don't know and we that just, is my question we don't know the objective so we don't what... know the objective okay so that is why krishna now arjuna is asking the question so that we will learn the objective <coughs> okay okay <clears throat> i think your thing is see i told you the word objective has caused a lot of problem no <laughs> it has caused a lot of anxiety dukkha nivrutti dukkha nivrutti is the objective the most insecure insecurity is the first question all of us we have oh what is going to happen to me that is the uh, um, question always it bothers us so krishna is asked arjuna is asking krishna how to first of all tell me what is the origin of this uh, grief <coughs> sorry thank, thank you thank you Um, sister anandi yes. uh, sairam uh, this is a practical question uh, we all know that uh, old age and senility the death are unavoidable and uh, even in this case swami already mentioned that that is human nature too that's that's why uh, swami also indirectly telling that maybe the 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 fear about the that the it's a reasonable thing as long as we are human and even if we go for a vacation or something we always uh, find about what is this destination how can we reach easily and what would be there and what kind of things we will expect from there and even for us if the day one week or two week vacation we are preparing all of these to find out or to enjoy that two week a uh, period in this case we don't know where will where we will be going and what would be there and what we are going to do in there so in in my understanding there would be an automatically in our mental thinking that uh, what we what we would be doing over there that's why maybe the, the fear of that is an automatic thing even if we are very in the spiritually elevated and all kind of knowledge we have already inbuilt in ourselves but still that fear of that is unavoidable because we don't know the destination we don't know what we will be doing over there also another reason this this life you know there is a human life cannot be get it you know from 
uh, any other world, or maybe this would be the only life we would be having the human in the birth. Maybe in our next birth, we could be even go down to the in the stage one or in the, the box number one. That's why automatically in our mind, there would be an anxiety and the fear and what we would be doing you know, in our next life. That's why the fear of death is unavoidable. You know, even, even if you really try hard not to be fear about the death, it would automatically come to our mind what we should be doing maybe that's the one the krishna is going to tell us all about in this chapter but i thought all these questions will be emerging every day when we when we closer to the death in the when the age goes in the day, and we will be having automatically this year okay. thank you thank you sister thank you Does anyone I mean, else have something to say? No, yes, I'm, I'm just thinking. So very good point, Sister Aruna has said objective is very key. So, so it means if our objective, if we set our objective as how can I reach to the point where my Lord is in my mind 24 seven. So we will start our journey, our conduct, our behavior because our objective is not thinking about the old age, it's just how I reach to the point where I remember him two hours or three hours, how can I remember him 24 seven? So our conduct and behavior will be in accordance with that objective. And then as we are growing older, we won't even realize we are old. Just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> because we have been busy with all sorts of things like Every year, maybe we are planning vacation the whole year. <laughs> as sister you know, I'm just thinking how how Shabri, she was just, I mean, I'm pretty sure Shabri didn't realize that she got old over 14 years or whatever time. I'm so sorry, I don't remember 12 years. Uh, she was just waiting for Lord Krishna, Lord Ram, Ram, Rama. So she might have not even realized that I'm old. You know what? I'm just looking forward for my Lord and you know, getting those bears and tasting it. Didn't even realize when is day and night. It's just, I am just waiting for my Lord. So I'm just thinking on along those lines, the objective is how can I maybe see my Lord before I leave? Or how can I be just in 24 seven engulfed with that energy? I won't even realize when I got my gray hair or I'm not able to walk or whatever because my objective is something else. Okay. Thank you, sister. Thank you. The word objective has really, <laughs> <I know. laughs> actually Swami is not saying, your acharana, your uh, conduct should be such, such a way, Swami is saying. Yes. Uh, such a way to? Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Yes, I don't understand, that is the one. That way, so We have to, because the conduct and behavior is going with that. So I want to, really want to understand what is no, Swami is saying. No, to try to find out a way how to remove this anxiety. See, sister, what Swami is telling is, you know, everyone is anxious. Just being anxious doesn't solve any problem. And the right thing to do is to, you have to do whatever you have to do so that you can remove it. Yeah. Whatever is needed. <laughs> whatever is needed, you have to do. See, but in the, any case, See, actually, this this solution applies to everything in life. If you know, if there's a fire, you know, in the house, just sitting in there and say, "Oh, there is fire, there is fire. Everything is going to burn. Everything is going to burn." Mm -hmm. Doesn't solve any problem. So, if you see fire, you have to just act. You have to do whatever is needed to put it out. Mm -hmm. At that point, then that is the objective. So, we are anxious when there is fire. That's, so that is you see a fire, you are anxious. Just being anxious doesn't have any use. Then Swami says, you should do what is needed at that time. Okay. 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 That is the objective. Okay. Take action. Take action. Take, ah, take action. That's all Swami is telling. There is no objective here. <laughs> the word take. objective is not. Take action. Yeah. Yes. Take action. 
to solve that problem. And first of all, Arjuna says, Krishna, I don't know what's the reason for this anxiety. The next paragraph, tell me what's the reason. You tell me what is the reason for my anxiety. How can I remove it? You tell me. That's what you so I think the solution is not only for death, for any problem in life. Don't be just worried and anxious. Do whatever you have to do to, uh, so that you can solve the problem. Yeah. At hand. Um, what is, um, I think there's a line before, like when at the end of what Krishna is saying. Uh, so what does that mean again? Um, see, you are you are approaching the worldly objects instead of approaching the Mayapati, the master of all this. You know, then how how can your uh, how can you conquer your grief? Uh, and then how how can you get that bliss? These two things. Conquering the grief and obtaining an, uh, bliss. These two. If there is no, if these two are not solved out, started out, then how will you get the liberation? So, so this is why Krishna Arjuna is asking the question, you see. So he's telling you have to remove Anand, you have to remove the sorrow. And you have to obtain Ananda. Ananda. These two th these two things have to be obtained yeah. before you can get liberation. Dukkha nivritti, Ananda prapti. That can be the exact uh, word. Uh, Isn't that already. Ananda prapti nivritti and Ananda prapti, aren't you already? We have already uh, come oh, across. No, we, we're not already. Oh. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She's <laughs> thinking we have already liberated if we go do this. Auntie, ah. Kalyan is asking if we got ah. Ananda Prapti, isn't it liberation? I think that's the question. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Liberation is completely uh, li liberating yourself from the body consciousness. That is liberation. Mm. So there are three steps, Kalyani, as you can see. <laughs> Dukkha Nivritti. Ananda, Ananda Prapti and Mukti and Mukti. Moksha Prapti, your Mukti. At the end. And what Sister Shivani pointed out about earlier, how Krishna is saying, if you leave everything to me, then my grace itself will dispel your grief. Hmm. So isn't that already the answer to the first? No, no, Pajar, uh, uh, Krishna is going to explain to you in the next paragraph what is the reason or is the origin for the dukkha. Arjuna has to realize, you know, what is the origin for this dukkha, the, the grief. Okay, but Krishna has already given the answer of how to get rid of the grief. Is that right? Like in no, I, not yet. Not yet. He's no, just not, not yet. So what I is think he has, he has just elaborated and we have pointed out the problem at this point in time. It's okay. only problem definition which has happened. Okay. Defining the problem. <laughs> but you know where it says the fog of grace will be dispersed by his Sorry, the fog of grief will be dispersed by the rays of his grace. So that so is if you surrender. If, yes, so you can that can be a solution, but you know, we are not even able to get there. That's <laughs> Arjuna's problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. He has given by solution. Yes. High level solution is given. But Arjuna is telling, I can't even get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> Next question he is going to say. Same thing. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be broken down, I guess. How to... So I think then we will move on if everyone is okay. Listen, Arjuna, Krishna condescended to reply. The source of all types of sorrow is ignorance, ajnana. You might ask me now, what is the source of Ajnana? I shall tell you. It is the identification with the body, the delusion that you are the body. This can be removed only by the acquisition of right knowledge. To remove darkness, light is what is needed. You cannot frighten it away. 
nor can you make it yield by prayer or petition or protest. Unless light is on, darkness will not disappear, howsoever you may try. So too, ajnana will not disappear by merely wishing for disappearance to happen. Once you understand the nature and ramifications of this trait, this ajnana, the truth will be laid bare and grief will vanish. When ajnana goes, grief too goes. So attach yourself to me and earn the light of true knowledge and tread the path of no grief, said Krishna. Immediately, Arjuna interjected, Krishna, you were saying till now of certain paths by which we can reach you. Now, at the end of it all, if you throw this cannonball, how can I ever grasp its meaning? You did not even confer as a preliminary a little power to do so. Please, therefore, make me happy by describing this point in greater detail so that I, may, I might follow you better and attain you. Krishna replied, my dear brother-in-law, listen, my mystery can be understood once you are clear about the meaning of Brahman, Adhyatman, the Paramatma, Karma, Adibhutam, the Supreme in the physical, Adidevam, the Supreme among gods, and Adiyagnam, the presiding deity of sacrifices. Let me tell you this also, whoever understands my mystery attains me. So much is this paragraph. <laughs> it's very long, so I, very, very intricate. Um, especially the last paragraph. <laughs> um, so I think, um, you know, I think just by reading the English, I think uh, Telugu also not too much is different, I guess, mm. uh, from what I read. So he's telling, you know, you can't cry that there is no light, no light. You have to switch on the light. Without light, the darkness will not leave. So the same way, um, we, we can't wish it away, as Swami says. So let's, I will stop here. I will ask others to share any thoughts you have, Sairam. Brother, can we take paragraph by paragraph? Line by line is better, sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I think, um, Kalyani, I think, why don't we read? Maybe uh, Auntie can read the Telugu line one and then we'll read the English one. If that's a translation, and we can discuss each one. Here. Okay. Arjuna, Vinu. So ignorance is the cause of all sorrow. You can ask, you may ask, what is ignorance? Sorry, what is ignorance? Because here in the English it says, what is the source? So... Uh, what is ignorance? I think Swami. Auntie, is that? Mula Karana. Mula Karana is. Okay, okay. What is the Mula Karana? Yeah, you can say call. It's not even source. Yeah, okay. What's the main source? Reason. Main, reason. main reason. Yeah, main reason. Mula Karana. Yeah. Mula Karana. So, Adi, Talakaval Nante, Nana Mukavale, no? If you want it. Remove if you want it removed, you have to have jnana or knowledge. I think I for next in that sentence I forgot to read. Dehatma Brante Agnanamo. Yeah. Dehatma Brante. So the delusion that the body is Atman is the cause for ignorance. Yeah. Adi Talagal Nente Gnanamu Kavalino. If for it to be removed or lost, then you have to have knowledge or jnana chikati poval nante velutru yanta avasaramo agdanu poval nante jnana manta anta avasarame just as light is needed to remove darkness 
knowledge is needed to remove ignorance jnana is needed to remove ajnana atlu kaaka cheekatini pommani bedriste adiriste prarthiste potunda instead of doing that, instead of doing that if you you can't scare it away you can't wish it away you can't pray pray it will not go veluturu brother sorry by ah. praying also you cannot do that's what swami saying yes ignorance no. will not go praying also will not help that by praying praying practice that no usually you pray to the darkness itself you know you can't pray to ignorance and say please go it will not go velutru tappa mare vidamuga prayatninchinanu adi vadalanadi kadalanadi kaadu if any has any such effort it's not going to move it or get removed one mm. but the everybody thinks praying will help them to remove ah no, so they are concentrating okay yeah. see who you pray to matters okay you can't pray to ignorance and ask it to leave <laughs> okay 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 but ignorance yeah because what, what swami is saying is usually we pray to the worldly things to remove the problem if you if we are going after money then that means we are praying to money if you are going after accumulation of anything in this world then we are praying to them we are the devotee of that so our prayer is because we think that is going to save us so so here swami is talking about praying to ignorance itself oh thank you sir runa for asking because i have yeah, been that is thank you i have been praying to <laughs> ignorance i thought that's option is also gone so i was scared thank you <laughs> అట్టులని అజ్ఞానము పోవలనే ఊరికే స్మరిస్తే పోదు దాని స్థితి గతి ఏమిటో విచారించి సత్యమును తెలుసుకున్న అజ్ఞానము అంతర్ధానమగును స్వామి ఇస్ టెలింగ్ జస్ట్ థింకింగ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు గెట్ ఇట్ రిమూవ్డ్ యు నీడ్ టు ఫైండ్ అండ్ ద రీజన్స్ ఫర్ ఇట్ అండ్ ఇన్ ఎన్క్వైర్ అండ్ దెన్ వర్క్ టువర్డ్స్ ఇట్ సరే ఆంటీ అజ్ఞానం అజ్ఞానం అంతర్ధాన మగును ఇట్ విల్ డిసప్యర్ సో యు హావ్ టు ఫైండ్ అవుట్ ద కాజ్ హౌ టు రిమూవ్ ఇట్ దెన్ యు హావ్ టు డు వాట్ యు హావ్ టు డు ఓన్లీ దెన్ ఇట్ విల్ బి రిమూవ్డ్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ద నేచర్ అండ్ రామిక్ రామిఫికేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ది స్ట్రీట్ yes this agnana the truth will be laid before bare and grief will vanish mm-hmm. so first paragraph i have read any questions about that oh, i think okay we can discuss sai ram uh, i have a question in here in in various vahinis and the uh, previous chapters we learned about in order to remove the ignorance uh, in order to in order to reach our destination or in order to feel the light within ourselves first we have to remove the uh, darkness that is the ignorance in in here swami is saying that to remove the darkness light is needed yeah. so it's kind of secular motion you know which one it should be we should be having first either we should be having the light in order to remove the ignorance or whether we should be trying to remove the ignorance then the light it would automatically you know the it will come out kind of so which one it would be first <laughs> the, this, this to remove the darkness so i'm yes. saying light is needed unless we have the light we cannot remove the darkness that is the ignorance so i think it's in the secular motion you know the, we don't know which one it should be coming first we are ignorant anandi we are ignorant ignorance is the first thing only then you know if you try to remove that ignorance knowledge will come you have to try you have to uh, put for a lot of for get get that yeah sorry so you know it's okay i'm sorry hmm. sister you know, know at home when it's dark you can't remove the darkness and then the light light bulb will go on <laughs> yeah exactly that's okay 
So when it's dark, we need to say we need the light. Then you need to know where the switch is. Then you need to go to the switch and on it and then the light will come. And the light only has the ability to remove the darkness. Because without the light, without light as the tool, we cannot remove the darkness. In the, that's why Swami has given that example also to us, I think. Because if you wish away the darkness, you say, oh, please, darkness leave, it will not leave. If you scare, you can't scare it, you can't order it, it will not leave. So Swami will say, you need to find out what you have to do, what is needed. Uh, know that you need light. Go looking for where the switch is on it. So the same thing, I think, analogy Swami has said, auntie is okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Madala, ignorance is there. We are all ignorant about the real nature of our, our own divine uh, self. So we are ignorant. To, to remove that ignorance, we have to put forth effort to get that knowledge that we are not this body. Sai Ram. Tamasoma Jodir Gameya. Ah, they are. Tamasoma Jodir Gameya. We are in Tamas. Yeah. Lead us to light. I think Sister Anand's question is we need light for the darkness to go. What is so, uh, what is the question? What is there? Uh, Sai Ramana. Yes, Sai Sitesh. Uh, no, I think um, for us to know that we have to go towards switching on the light, the inner light has to first come on. So, <laughs> so in the sense... You, are you saying the bulb has to go on inside? Yes, the bulb inside has to glow, and then the bulb outside will glow. <laughs> so I'm just saying, yeah, in one sense, uh, to Sister Anandi's question, it's like, if I am moving away from west, I am moving towards east. So if that feeling of going towards Swami is there and putting that thing is there, like uh, what Anna or Aunty were saying, that uh, it is knowing first we are in ignorance because that if we feel that, oh, I'm already fine, everything is fine, it can be from two senses. One, we are fully immersed in the world or we are fully liberated. But usually it is that we are so engulfed that we don't know that we are in that state. So first is knowing that we are in that state of grief and knowing that we are in that state of grief also comes with samskaras and so many things that have come from past lives to what we are doing as sadhana in this life because it needs that inner switch to come on as well, which whether we call it God's grace or our love for God, but nevertheless, it is that effort that is needed because when Swami says, take one step towards me, I will take the hundred steps towards you. It comes down to that one step as well while holding on to Swami. So it is like you really cannot say this is means as the de-weeding of the garden happens, the sowing of the seed happens simultaneously kind of a thing. So it is like if we have to go into that way of how we till the land and then put the right things inside. So it is having that intense feeling or love, which helps us recognize that something is not permanent and something else is permanent, which then helps the cascade of things to happen. But nevertheless, it goes along like Swami says, like Daiva Preeti, Papa Bhiti, Sanganiti, love for God, fear of sin, morality in society. So having that thing of keeping or moving towards God will guide the rest of the activities. I don't know. Thank you very much, Sir Satish. I think us reading this itself is Swami trying to put on the inside light first. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Yenadi. That was exactly my question. Maybe uh, Brother Sai Sadis uh, read my mind, Yenadi. Without having something, how can I even, Brother Aruno, when send, go and find the switch and you know, put on the switch to remove the darkness? And we also previously learned that even I can pray, you know, the, the, every single moment, unless otherwise God's grace, you know, the, uh, comes to me, 
we cannot really uh, do anything. Maybe that sort of blessings should be coming from the Lord in order to you know, initiate something, you know, baby. Uh, now I understand that uh, uh, originally I thought the two th things, it was cleared. I thought the prayer will work. And then not only the prayer, the uh, God's grace also should be there to to reach the destination. That is one thing. And the other one, a uh, little bit of, you know, the, the God's grace should be there even in the darkness to go towards the switch, you know, Didi. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think Sai Sat is telling that, you know, you know, in a, in a dark room, we are all sleeping. When we are sleeping, we don't know it's dark outside because our eyes are closed and we are asleep. Then somebody wakes us up. So then we open our eyes and then we look around and so it's darkness outside. So that is uh, like God has to wake us up to know that there is ignorance, which is what I think Sai Sat is said. Uh, that also God's help is needed to wake us up. Otherwise, we will not know that we are sleeping in a dark room. Yes, Brother Tarsan. Okay. So, Sairam, Brother. So, the, if we take that whatever we studied before, the parrot inside the cage, and we also inside the cage that is darkness. But we think when we have all the education and that uh, all the big houses and everything, we are happy. That is in the darkness. When we talk about Anjana, we always talk about dark and the light. And Atvaida, we talk about Atvaida, we talk about Dvaita. When we talk about the Jnana, Anjana, darkness is not there when the light is comes. Same thing, Atvaida is the same thing, uh, uh, main principle, but we are in the Dvaita. Atvaida comes, Dvaita will disappear. Jnana comes, the Anjana will that darkness will disappear. In order to get the knowledge, the main knowledge is Viveka and Vairakya. So Viveka, we all understand that's the reason we are putting the Udi on the forehead because all the objects one day is going to be asses. So in order to get the Vairakya, we have to do the charity. In, in that kind of, when we are practicing those kind of things, we can get the real light. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Sorry, I'm uncle. Last time, in the previous paragraph, we were talking about how there's three steps, Dukkha Nivriti, then Ananda Prapti, then Mukti. Mm -hmm. But to get Dukkha Nivriti, Swami saying you have to get Jnana. So isn't that the highest? Like, it, how can that be the first step? I was just wondering that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a circular logic, you know, is that what you are saying? Yeah, it, or is it like that everything just happens at the same time? Or Kalyani. Can you repeat the question again, please? Um, is, Uncle, you want to try to? Okay, no, I, yeah. I, I will tell, I hope if I understood right, Kalyani. So what Kalyani is asking is, Jnana is the ultimate goal, that we are one. You know, just now Brother Thasan said, Advaitam. So we and God are one. That is the real Jnana. Of if that is the end goal, when you know we are totally merged in the Lord. Now Swami is telling for ignorance, which is the dukkha and vritti, the sorrow to go, there has to be <laughs> Ajnana, Ajnana should go. Okay. Ajnana to go, then you need uh, Jnana. So Kalyan is asking, so Jnana is the goal. So is Jnana also the starting point for our sorrow to go? We have to have, we first should remove the ignorance. For us to remove the ignorance, then we have to have jnana. So then she's telling that is the end goal. So are we starting out with the end goal? Is the question. Kalyani, am I right? What you yes. Yeah. Here, think... based on the context, it's uh, just uh, get, getting the knowledge, right? Just uh, start. Just to understand. Then is... we are realizing is... one is the jnana. That's the real jnana. This is the understanding stage, I will say. Thanks. I think recognizing and accepting that you are in the Ajnana stage, mm. 
is a gyanist, is the first step of jnana. I mean, you know, it's, it's a very gray area. That's my interpretation. You are a jnana. And so moving from a jnana to realize or recognize I am a jnana and I need to be jnani, that's the first step. And then reaching to where you are basically one with Lord to that stage. But jnani stage starts, but it's, it's, it's like a spectrum. You know, it's a spectrum. You're starting recognizing and acknowledging it is the first step of jnani. That's, that's my interpretation. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. Uh, Sairam, Sairam, Sairam. So, so for Sister Kalyani Singh, going with what was also just said, um, so first I'll, I'll give like an analogy. First, it's something like I'll say I'll have to do Jyoti meditation. It's more like I have to do Jyoti meditation because of certain reason. And then I start off by doing Jyoti meditation. I'll say light is in me. Then I'll say I am in the light. And finally, I'll say I am the light. So when we are saying the ultimate thing, I am the light, that is the jnanam, which is mukti dayakam or absolute liberation. But I am starting at the point that I have to do Jyoti meditation or I have to do that. So that is the thing like what Sister Shivani was saying, like at the basic level, knowing the, that I have to do something because I am lacking in something. For, that also is jnanam, but it is at the first foot of the um, stairway. So then we go on to seeing that the light is in me. So we go to that stage. Then we see that I am in the light. And then so we keep, so it is, Jnanam is not only the destination, it is the journey as well. So that is the kind of things that we are going in from that primary school, secondary school, and then the institute level, and finally the graduation. That kind of is. Thank you, Sai Sadesh. Anyone else would like to share? <coughs> so in, yes, I think yes, there's a, I don't know whether I'm jumping the gun, but See, there are, so Krishna has told three steps in, in the process of uh, attaining the goal. Okay. The first one is called Nyatum. The second one is called Drashtum. The third one is called Tatvena Praveshtum. Okay. So I think Sister Aruna also mentioned, this is an intellectual comprehension of an issue. And then we have to be able to see it, experience it. And then finally merge in it. Um, Swami tells, you know, for example, uh, you know, you, you, some mango, you want to, you know, you like a mango, a particular mango, and uh, somebody tells you it has come to the market. So you come to know of it. That is also jnana. Jnana at just the intellectual level, comprehension level. That is also jnana. But the thing is that the jnana is not fully internalized and experienced. So then you go to the store, you know, market and look at the mango. And then that gives you slightly, you know, you're taken one step as Sai Satish was telling, it has gone to the next level. Okay, then you bring it home and you eat the mango. And the mango enters you and it becomes one with you. So the same way, the jnana itself, for it to mature, there are three steps. And the first time, first thing is know that there's mango. Until then, you will say, oh, I don't have mango. I don't know when it's going to come. You know, you may be worried about it. The season has come, but you know, I have, I, maybe this, this time I will not get. All these are worries. And the first thing comes, oh no, the jnana has, mango has come to the market. So that is an intellectual comprehension. That's also jnana. But jnana has entered only at the comprehension level. Okay, but it has not fully been internalized. So this is my understanding. I think that's what Sai, Brother Sai Satish also was trying to say. A I seeker, think. sorry, a yes, seeker, uh, adhyatmic um, Dani who wants to know about Dana, first of all, he should recognize that he is ignorant. We are ignorant. We are in a stage where, you know, we, have, we don't know our real nature. Then this journey starts there. So I think in the first paragraph, what Swami is trying to tell us is, you are in darkness, you are ignorant, though that, recognize that, and then put forth all your effort to remove 
the that ignorance that ignorance will disappear with with the grace of the lord that's also there so it will not disappear by merely wishing for it swami is saying it thank Sorry. you thank you yes sister ranjini thavara yes. thank you yes i in the first paragraph it says you might ask me now what is the source of agnana i shall tell you it is the identification with the body the delusion that you are the body i mm. can you please explain that that, that paragraph okay thank you sister yeah. um, i will open it up for anyone to uh, sister is asking identification with the body is the cause of uh, this delusion so she would like it to be explained anyone volunteering <laughs> So, so Sairam brother. Yes, brother. Um, so we are Atma, but we don't realize that we are Atma. We are, or uh, uh, we think we are the body, and we think mm -hmm. Jiva Atma. That also we think the body. We always connect to our body. The so so body is not permanent. Atma is the permanent. When we do anything, we are not the doer. god is the one doer so if you think about that way then you can come out from the grief thank you saira thank you thank you i think it's moven is volunteering so i will attempt saira yes santi please go ahead god is eternal atma is eternal the maya that was created by god is eternal but we are identifying by body which is not eternal it perishable but the soul that is inside the atma is eternal so we have to go for the eternal we have to identify ourselves with our atma not with our body thank you saira thank you ramana just adding to what was being told um if if i feel that i am the body then based on what was told itself it being impermanent has its own fal fallacies that the same thing of what somi was saying that automatically i feel that i will age and all of that thing of death following so swami says that even as we are born we are born with this uh, garland which is around our thing which is basically our karmic thing but that whatever comes out of that karma is again and again because we identify ourselves with the body so right from the time we are born from basically the womb to the tomb we are guided with that thing of being impermanent which draws upon us all the limitations of that being impermanent and all the six vices of that kama krodha lobha moha madha matsarya all of those everything that in in one sense is having that limitation that we are the body brings upon itself the delusion which again puts us into fear and anxiety mm -hmm. so it is me saying whether i am the god within having a human body or i am a human body and get limited there itself so it is like if i can start by saying that i didn't i identify that i am the body and the, all of the thing that is there with it but i move i make the effort to go away from it then i am trying to go away from the delusion and take a step towards the divinity one within and ultimately realizing the divinity within which makes me come out of that delusion so it is always that if i relate to the body automatically because of it being limited uh, uh, because of it having a limitation it has delusion as the thing coming of it thank you thank you just to add to whatever has been spoken by others 
um, I think uh, identification with the body means, you know, just to go a little further. Swami always uh, gives the example, if somebody comes and asks us, who are, who are you? We may tell our name. Yeah. Uh, so I may tell my name is Aruna or Sister Ranjani, you will say I'm Ranjani. Yes. Um, the Swami says that is not you because that was a name given to the body when it was born. Yes. But you are different. You are much different than that. You have just gotten into the body and that body was given a name, Ranjani. So whenever somebody asks, you give that name. Yes. And uh, otherwise you will say, I'm doing this work. That means the body is engaging in that work. But Swami says it's like um, somebody who is on the stage playing a character in a drama. Uh, you know, you may be acting as a queen or uh, you know, something, a queen, for example. And uh, But you know who you are. Yes. So on the stage, you will act as if you are the queen. But you know that you are not the queen. Only from the stage you are doing that. Mm -hmm. So if you act, if you identify with the state of queen, and then you may think, you may, if you forget who you are, then that is ignorance, Swami says. Yeah. Knowing that I am just playing this role in this body, but I am much beyond that. I was there before, and after this body goes also, I will live. Yeah. So knowing that and living our life, is what Swami is talking about. So identification with the body means the name and form which we are in today we are living in, we think that is we are. No, Swami says no, that is something which you have put on. It's a it's a play, it's a character which you have put on in a drama in this world. But you are not that. You are playing that role. Don't forget that you're playing that role, but you are not that. So that understanding has to come, and that Swami says. If we forget that who we are, but think that we are the role which we are playing, then that is ignorance. Mm -hmm. So I hope that complements whatever others have also said. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Well, brother, I'd like to add to your point, to brother. After the body goes, as you said, we live too. If we all believe in Satya Sai Baba, Sri Baba, that body is not there, but he's around us. So he took the body in sake of us. So he, uh, he uh, so the body goes even, he's around us. Same thing, we also as divine sparkle, we also going to be around. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much. You know, talking about this, I was reminded of Kalyani's question, so I will go back to that. She <laughs> said, you know, we are, we already have, if the first step is jnana, then what is the goal? See, for example, we have all recognized Swami as an avatar. Uh, that itself is knowledge. Uh, that itself is jnana, you know, he is divine. And Swami has said that you are also divine. So that is the starting point of that jnana that has been acquired by us today. But that is not the end of our journey. That is actually the start of the journey. So just having the knowledge that the Lord is there to guide us itself is the first step. But that doesn't mean we have reached him. So this itself is knowledge know that the Lord has come and a recognition of that. So the first step is something like that, that, you know, the Lord is here and he's going to help us. And that itself is uh, the first step. But that doesn't mean that we have reached the last step and we should not be complacent. Uh, so I thought I would just, it just struck me. So in this paragraph, when Swami is saying the right knowledge, he's not talking about ultimate jnana. He's no. talking about just no. the first jnana. Because so even, ultimate jnana is full experiential knowledge. Okay. But even without that experiential knowledge, even just with the theoretical knowledge, we can have dukkha nivriti? Of course. Oh, really? If, if you've really comprehended it properly, we have dukkha is gone. Oh. Dukkha is fully gone. See, it is like, you know, if a child... If the child has the mother around, then the child doesn't have any fear. Even though the child has not become the mother or father, it has ways to go to grow up to be like them. But just the fact that somebody is there will remove all problems. Okay, you will not have fear. The mother or father may be afraid. That's a different story. But the child will not be afraid. 
So just that knowledge will remove the fear, all worry. Because that is what Krishna is telling, that I am there for you. That's why Swami says, you leave everything to me. See, the whole problem is the child leaves everything to the parents and it is very happy. But we, even though the Lord is there, we are not giving everything to the Lord. So we are not so happy. We are still worried. So just, just look at a child. The child doesn't know much. The child just leaves everything to the parents and has total faith that the parents will be there for it. Any problem comes. So the child is very secure. He doesn't know anything else. It only knows one thing. It has left everything to the parents. Mm. So that is total faith. But we don't have that kind of faith with the Lord. Even as a child, we don't have that faith. If we have that faith, then no worries, absolutely. As soon as worry or fear hits us, which that is the first sign that oh, we don't have faith in the Lord. Very, very simple. We are not even a child who doesn't know anything but has is waiting on the Lord. Okay, so I hope that example is uh, yes, right. And on a lighter note, uh, we are able to check in the baggage with the airlines, but we are not able to check in our baggage in our life. We carry it with us. <laughs> That's hand luggage. What is Sai, brother uh, Sai? So I, I couldn't hear it. Again? Yes, please. You <laughs> didn't hear it. No, we couldn't I, hear I, it. Yeah, I was just saying that usually uh, when we travel by air, we have check-in baggage. So we check in with the airlines and we believe completely that the airlines will deliver the baggage at our destination, wherever we come. But in our life, we are not able to do that. We check in with God. We leave all our baggage, our worries, our sorrows, our difficulties, everything with Swami. And he will take us to destination. We are not able to do that. We make the check-in also into a carry-on and keep it with us even on our seat while sitting. That <laughs> yeah. is a that is true. That is true. <laughs> Interesting. So I think it's a good it's a good paragraph because now whenever this paragraph we can actually you know are we anxious about something? Are we worried about something? That means oh oh, oh we are not even the first step. We have not left everything to the Lord. We are still carrying the baggage as size. We should be like Prahalada. <laughs> so, Sairam, brother, we studied before about the surrendering, how we had to surrender the two example. We studied that monkey and the cat. The baby monkey hold on to the mother. Still, she has the faith, but still not 100%, 90%. If it's a cat, the baby doesn't do anything. The cat will move from one location to another location. So we had to be like a cat. Okay. You know, just, yeah. Uh, small kitten, yeah, just. Yeah, okay, so it it yeah. just says mew, mew, and then. Yeah, that's, that's it. Marjala nyaya, marketa nyaya. Yes, brother Ghani. I am. My my interpretation and in of an in understanding of Swami's teaching is that we are we are now in, um, going through the Agnana period, whatever Jnana we think we have attained. But um, in the end, after from this process of uh, Agnana to Jnana, we are, then we have to accept that we we are Agnana about the Jnana itself. Then you reach the stage of Jnana, really. That's when we, I think, we reach the Swami's uh, teaching of uh, Jnana. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Like how much we don't know. <laughs> Sairam. Sairam. Sairam, brother and sisters. When I yes. have so much yes, impurity, can you hear me? No. Yes, yes. Please can go ahead, sister. Yeah, I always think I put soap and bathe every time. 
physical outside, but internal impurities have to be removed for Swami's grace to flow. Like open colors, we let the Swami's grace, but when we keep it upside down, how it then we say, oh, we are doing prayers, we are listening to singing bhajan and attending all this satsang. But we have to do self-audit every day and see the impurities are to removed for Swami's grace to flow through. If I say I'm God, do I see God in others? Till I die, you know, I had to recognize God in everybody and everything. So we become God. So Swami is like that. His love is always same. Doesn't matter, right? So I think we have to put that into practice. So we can remove the ignorance, like small things, like we have to take baby steps. Sairam. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. So I think we are okay with the first paragraph. Do we attempt? It's about 420. Second paragraph, yeah. Second paragraph, you can go. Okay, and we will start at least. Mm. Should I read? Yes, Auntie. Agnanamu yapudu ledo, apudu dukkamu kuda ledo. When ignorance is not there, sorrow is also not there. Atti dukkha nivratti marga maina, nanna ashra inchi, gnana jyoti ni sampandhi inchu kuni, shashwata anandamu anubhavinsu. Ani Krishna do upadeshin chenu. Nanna ashra inchi, come to me, come to my. Take refuge in me. Yeah. And uh, I think we will, I think, word by word, auntie. Yeah. Dukkha nivrutti marga maina. The so way. the path, the way to remove the sorrow. Sorrow. Nan nashra inchi. Taking refuge in me. Nana jyotini sampadin sukuni. Earn the light Nala. of wisdom. Light of wisdom. Light of wisdom. Shashwata Anandamanu Anubhavinsu. Permanent bliss should be experienced. So, so four steps he's saying. Take refuge in me. Uh, then earn light. the light of not wisdom. Not wisdom. Then you can have permanent Shashwata Ananda. Then have permanent bliss. Ventane Arjunudu Andukani Krishna Intavarku Tamaru Cheru Margamulu Konintini Telpitri Tatapata Urumula Vale Tamaru Matalano Velchina Nakartama Vetu Swami Atapata Uramula Vale Tamaru Matalano Velchina Nakartame Artamagur etlo Nakanta Shakti Nena Alukra in Saledu. Na Kanta Shakti Naina no Anugra in Salid Kana, Dai Chesi, Yevi Teluskunda Tamano, Cheragalamo, Bartini Vipulamogar, Salavici, Nano, Krutartini Chayuno. Okay, and I will read by that, that line by line, Auntie. Uh, yeah, this cannonball, you know, that. Yeah, that's a cannonball. Gurumul, Gurumul. Questioning. I have uh, used Jagannath uh, Nair, the, the very complicated language. Uh, so, <laughs> how can I understand? He says, Arjuna is saying. Uh, so, Arjuna is asking him, Krishna. Krishna, Intavarku, Tamanu, Cheru Margamulu, Konnitini Telpitri. So, you have told me a few ways to reach you so yeah. far. Tatapata Uramulu Vala Tamaru, Matalanu, Velchina, Nak Artha Magu Tetlu. Now, if you are, you are just you know throwing a cannonball at me, how can I understand it? You know, uh, you are not giving me the strength to understand meaning. Because, if you are doing something, you are watini pilupamaga nalavichi salavichi nannu krutarthini cheyimo 
So you please elucidate me in detail, step by step, what has to be done yeah. in greater detail. So and uh, so that I will be grateful to you. I can reach you. I can come on the Kritarthana is fine. I I I feel Kritartha. That is. Uh, oh, Kritartha. Oh, I see. So I. I okay. I'm blessed. Or, okay. Yeah, Kritartha Chayam. That is it. I'm blessed. You know, Kritartha. Uh, full. My life is fulfillment. fulfillment. I will. Re, I, I will attain fulfillment in this life. Mm -hmm. So Arjuna is more or less in the same boat as us, so we can write for two months. <laughs> See, he's the, it's Arjuna is saying, even to understand, please grant me some strength. You know, the power to understand it also, you have to give me that also. In Tamil, they will say, Avan Arulal, Avan It means even mm -hmm. with his grace only, we can understand him also, or understand what he's saying. Swami is putting himself in Arjuna's position, <laughs> saying that <laughs> Swami used all this language. <laughs> he himself is saying, I cannot understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I think. Yeah, so I, I think maybe we will pause here because it's 426. Yeah. It's okay. Because the next paragraph is too heavy. Oh, we have to leave. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> So much, so much. Yeah, so that is again cannonballs after cannonballs. Ah. So we will leave it for next week if it's okay. Um, so if anyone has something to say on whatever we have read and discussed so far, uh, please do. Otherwise, uh, we can close with this. Okay, I think we'll close today because I think there's enough for us to mull over. Um, Saira. Saira. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sairam everyone Sairam Thank you Thank you Sairam Sairam